Juan, you got the camera on, bro? Tons of goodies. Every bit counts. So we got two options here. Ooh. Is it Trump already? Oh, you got the headlight in. Now we're under the gun. Uh, I'm spying on all this great stuff. Dude. Some assembly required. Dude. Taco time, baby. Oh boy. That's some real tacos. Yeah. One dog. It's 7 a.m. Everyone's early, in the office, so what are you early doing? Early morning wake up call. I'm getting my coffee. What, you, what is that? This is top secret. I'm making my coffee. What, right? it's a 3D printed part? Yeah, it's a 3D printed part. What about that in a little bit? What do you got going here? Little Nespresso, brother. This all right, is to so, kickstart the morning. So we all showed up 7 a.m. and we have a full day. A lot of you guys have been asking, what's up with the move? And also we've got the progress of the bike. And the crazy thing about it, is basically both of them kind of have to be done at the same time. This bike needs to be done at the end of June or uh -huh. middle to end June, June 24th. And the thing is, is that we also need to be out of these buildings by the end of June. That building by, by the, the end, end of, of this May. Month. Yeah. So the building that we're in and we're working on the bike. So we have multiple units in this facility and the building that we're in working on the bike, we're supposed to be out of by the end of May. Which is two weeks. And it is May 17th. So we have we're more than halfway through the month. Yeah. A couple bikes apart in there. Some and that don't work. <laughs> yeah. You, I don't know if you guys remember, there used to be a rack right here with product on it. There was product on this rack. So we started palleting it. We're gonna get these pallets out to make room because you said you were working on the- Yeah, I need the lathe. So he was working on the lathe and then we messed this whole area up. So me and Juan are gonna spend the morning loading this up on the rental truck over there and uh, moving this to the new facility. Shortly after when we get back and we're settled in, we're gonna keep working on the ST and... These weren't even locked in. No. What? Everyone that works in the warehouse here is forklift certified, but me. Don't call OSHA. Yeah. You guys in enough? All the product out of that warehouse. We're loaded up. We might have some more room on this rig. We got one lifting boxes. I wouldn't go too much higher than the fence. From a distance. Still a lot of work to be done on this SD. Basically four and a half weeks. And we got, dude, we have to get the tins. Over to paint. To paint this yeah. week. That's what's important then. So here's the thing. We don't want to take the tins up to paint until like things have been test fitted. And Juan, give us a small brief description of what's going on here. Having some alignment issues with the inner bracing that we made. Okay. Um, I mean, one thing to note is that this is a lot stiffer too. So it has less give. Yep. So that's fighting us. But yeah, just the holes aren't lining up. So we need to get a game plan to how we're going to make a match. So basically when Juan developed this uh, exoskeleton inside fairing, uh, he, he scanned it off of the OEM stuff. He scanned the OEM interior, he scanned the OEM exterior, and he developed this. And as you guys can see, he did a lot of gusset work and he did some cool other pieces. First things we did was we 3D printed the gussets and that kind of let us know, like definitely increase the uh, rigidity. It was just moving more than what we wanted to. So when we had it mounted on the bike, I went for a ride. You never rode it that way. Is that the headlight hooks only to the exterior fairing. Yes. So it only hooks to this part of the fairing. And so then when we made this skeleton, because we're not bolting it up here anywhere, and it doesn't have the full structure of the other inner fairing, this was like- Yeah, it was just like a big pendulum, like hanging off of it. I actually have a top brace that's also out of aluminum that I haven't installed, but I will, to help increase the rigidity. And then we also integrated the headlight mount into this. So it's no longer just floating off the yeah, exterior fairing. Now it's being held on by the mount bracket as well. So it's still all Jimmy rigged together. This is yeah. not how the final product will look like. We're not using this riveted 3D printed pieces. But one thing that we did have to make is this 3D printed part, an area that we can actually bolt the headlight to. Yep. So now it's bolting to the front of the fairing as well as the back. 
back of the fairing and that is not stock on a um, on a normal ST fairing. When he put it on here, he was able to get some of the bolt holes to line up, but then this one's way up. And if we push too hard, it'll crack the carbon. This one is off by, you know, half inch. This one's off by maybe three quarters of an inch. I got a couple ideas at my sleeve. The carbon fairing that we got, it none of the holes are drilled out. So normally there's, there's holes here drilled out for the headlight and these would be drilled out. So on the stock one, a lot of the windshield stuff goes through those areas and those are not cut out on that one. Threaded plastic areas on the stock one where the headlight showing you from the interior uh, go and that's not done. Not only there's a lot of work to be done on this carbon exterior fairing if you even just use your stock interior fairing anyways, like there's some work to be done to make this even work at all. But then the fact that we're even going to another level of like having a custom piece that's like, you know, does it has tight tolerances. So we'll get it figured out. And once we do, it's off to the races to paint. Yeah, we gotta go take that truck to the other warehouse. Get it on, homie. All right, homie. See you when you're back. All right. I grabbed Rob. We are off to the new facility. So Rob's been with us for, what has it been, Rob? Like four or five years? Uh, or three, four? Four, four and a half. And so Rob was a customer. He used to come in. Did you have a FXR or a Sporty at the time? So I had uh, my first blue frame FXR actually. And really? How I got connected was you saw with my skateboard rack on the side, you were yeah. taking photos out from. We started talking. <laughs> there we are, four years later. Rob's uh, built some cool bikes at his house, some cool FXRs like FXRs, that. FXRs, baggers, dynas. I'm sure you guys seen a couple of the bike check videos on the YouTube channel. Yep, yep. So if you haven't, check out our bike check videos. We're gonna go head to the shop and go start unloading this stuff right now. Guy just rolled up. He has thrashing bars, risers, handlebar bag. What up? Oh, what's just up, checking man? out your bars and risers. Appreciate it, man. Oh yeah, have a good day. He was like, <laughs> he was like oh shit. <laughs> gonna pull in, Jake's already here. Top of the morning. They're cleaning the warehouse right now. Sheesh. One down, six or eight to go. So we're trying to get everything off of the floors right now because they are cleaning up the warehouse floors and polishing downstairs kind of office and showroom area. Fiber. Go check it out. What do you think, dude? Look at that mid control. Damn, the mids actually look crazy. What do you say? Is this like two inches and one inch back? Uh, three back, like one and a half up. Yeah, full race bike mode. Oh, you got the headlight in? Damn, you've been to work. Went to town on this thing. You just set this on here? Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry. We all know that we're pressed on time. And so it's like, what can we actually get done in time? There's, of course we can do, you know, infinite to this bike. There's so many more things we could do if we had six months to build it. Yeah, the biggest limiting factor for us right now is time. We could let our imaginations run wild, but we really only got four weeks. So that's gonna be the biggest constraint for us. But Juan's like, dude, we cannot show up to Born Free without some gnarly stuff. Yeah. Insisted that we needed to increase ground clearance, increase cornering clearance has been hard at work 3d scanning on his computer and he developed some pretty rad stuff it's still gonna take some fine tuning yeah. and we still have to actually make some stuff we can use but this is uh, a good start so show me what we got i just am not a fan of what this looks like so i had a buell blast i don't know if you're familiar but yeah. they had the passenger mounts it came off like this okay. something like that and they would call them the tusks but they were welded on the frame and everyone would cut them off and like, oh, did you detusk your bike? <laughs> so that, this just reminded me of that. So this goes here and okay. mounts your peg onto it. And that's all it really does. And it's just really big and bulky and it weighs a lot. Okay. So I just see. wasn't a big fan of it. Oh, so heavy, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a big thing. So we wanted to change it up. We also wanted it, like you said, in, increase ground clearance, make the peg go up a little bit higher and make it lighter. So that's kind of our idea with that right so, now. So peg would have been here. You can see it's it's lower and it's more forward. Right. So I can already tell you that he has a Dyna shift arm on there, which yep. is probably two inches closer back is my guesstimate. Yeah, the, the Dyna shift arm is about two inches uh, further back but the peg went about three. But the distance between these two, it's similar to a Dyna setup. Okay, so he did this cool piece, attaches to the primary bolts, kind of hangs over and would put you in a pretty rad position. And then what he did on this side is even cooler. So we really wanted, and I was pretty adamant about like, dude, we need to use the brake arm that we just developed. Yeah. 
And so I didn't want to like go crazy off and switch this mid control. He came up with this super ingenious idea where he's still using our our current, like the brake arm that we sell. This is right off the base of the production line. And then he custom fabbed a longer linkage and you can see the original uh, mounts right there. But now because he's mounting here, he brought this whole thing up and he made this custom mount that squeezes between the exhaust system bolts to the trans and the engine. This is kind of gnarly, a gnarly part. And you know, we're gonna try to incorporate some really high tech technology. Yeah, some like some more advanced stuff. So we're gonna try to 3D print that. So I think that's something that's a little bit newer. So, okay, what he, what he means is we're gonna 3D metal, metal print 3D it. Print. Yeah, so something like that would be very, very challenging to machine out of aluminum. It would take a really long time. You would need a lot of material. One of the things that I wanna do for us at Born Free that kind of separates us from the rest is like let's incorporate some new technology so metal 3d printing like that's pretty new it's pretty yeah. high-tech stuff that allows us to make some gnarly intricate things that you sometimes can't even machine yeah so I'm super stoked on that that kind of opened up a whole nother realm for us so when there's a part like this everything is cut by a drill bit and so when there's cutting here and then they got to turn it and they got to drill a hole and then they got to turn it and then you got to do all this cutting and there's some ways that the machinists call them you would need a metal eating worm because there's like sometimes Juan can draw or we can draw something that just physically is impossible to get a drill bit to. So it's just like, even though it, on the computer it looks good and you can 3D print it in plastic and everything looks like it's gonna be good, you take it to any machinist and they're like, dude, it's physically impossible to get to this position. Basically with 3D metal printing, you should be able to make these um, impossible to make billet pieces and then 3D print them and they should be usable. Like, yeah. they should be strong enough, right? Yeah, it's 100% it's the same strength as like, if it was like a machine piece. It just opens the door to some gnarly or like crazier designs. You know, like when we're designing, we, we always keep in mind like, oh, can, can you machine that? Can you, and even then like still stuff slips by and then like I give some something to rob it's like oh you can't do that but now not having to worry about that we could really like start doing some gnarly stuff so i'm really stoked on that we might be running into a little bit of clearance right there i don't know what do you think yeah so so i'll show you guys the shift arm it comes out this way a little bit more so you can see it's already rubbing there yeah i'm gonna have to increase the clearance here but what i saw here i was comparing to the dyna it doesn't yep. flip all the way up so we don't need that much up uh -huh. flip. Yep. So I'm gonna beef up the back. Uh -huh. The reason why that's there is because I need, I wanted strength. Gotcha. So now if I beef up so the back. So you can come up a little bit more. And then I get clearance that area. Okay. And then clearance there and we should be solid. Okay. Yeah. All right, so we're officially three inches back with the pegs and at least an inch up. Yeah, like an inch, inch and a quarter. Damn, dude. And it looks so good. But yeah, it's getting there. Wow, dude grab some of the parts that they can expect to see on this bike that we still have to work on. We can kind of show them what's left. We'll throw the back fender on just to test fit it, make sure the holes are in the right area, start working on the bags. When I opened up the gas tank that I ordered that was supposed to be the Street Bob tank, I somehow gave Harley the part number for the exact same tank that was already on this. So if that tank doesn't show up in time, we're just gonna steal that tank off the other Street Bob and take that up because we have to get these tins up to Air Tricks by this week. Now we're under the gun, let's get to it tons of goodies All these right. guys are right here coming in like they have this for my bike <laughs> no i even saw some comments you guys need a stronger clutch yeah. There it is. They're right. like, so let's bring this all over and show them what we've got so far. And I've even got some news for you. So well, you got that, man? this out too. Hey, this right here, what it's a it? box, the present, dude. Brahmi and Zach to Lance and Juan. They sent us some patches and an American flag made in the USA. What's going on, bros? We are part of the 335th FGS Chiefs. While on deployment, we flew a flag on a mission in honor of y'all. Love your products and videos, ride safe. Sent some sweet kind of Velcro TPR rubber patches. While they're on a mission in honor of us. Oh, this is sick. Oh, dude, look at that. Dude, that's Check sick. that out. All right, what does it say? This flag was proudly flown in an F-15 Strike Eagle on a combat sortie over Syria and Iraq in support of Operation Inherent Resolve on September 26th, 2022, in honor of Thrash and Supply. Dude, that's, that's sick. That's, 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 that's sick, that's dude. Sick. I'm not gonna let it touch the ground, but this is gonna go in the new shop that we just came from, that we just showed you guys. We're gonna hang this up. Hey, Rami and Zach, thank you so much for this. We really appreciate it. We appreciate your service. Everyone in the active duty military, thank you so much. This is a big honor. We really yeah. appreciate it. 
Thank you. Juan, you got the camera on, bro? I know the way you are, dude. I've, I've handed you the camera, and you record the ground and then miss the good shot. Oh, no. That's Jake. He sits over there. Oh, he's right there. This is nice. Just holding the camera while Lance does all the work. That's right, baby. Don't, I don't know drop. This, I don't know if this is going to make the parts any lighter, the bike any lighter, bro. <laughs> we don't need to weigh this stuff because there's no comparison, but show everyone what you got in your hand. What do you have? Shock. Stock shock. <laughs> yeah, stock shock. Stock shock. We are going to be switching to this Olin's shock, which is going to pair with our Olin's front end. I say 15 pounds. 50? I say nine. You waited already. <laughs> oh, but I forgot. <laughs> all right, well, let's see. You're a cheater, <laughs> asshole. All right, so I it's nine. Remember, I swear. So it's nine pounds. How much are we gonna save on this rock? I say like we save a pound and a half. Six and a half. That's two and a half pounds. There we go. That's pretty good. Every bit matters, dude. Every bit counts. And the shock's better. A superior shock, an improvement in suspension and handling. So everybody knows this is not a paid advertisement. Go uh, stay there. We bought that shock from get lowered, but packing slip order number. So a lot of these parts we've been buying from dealers that support us to sell some of our stuff, but they've had this stuff in stock and um, we've been able to get it through them. This build isn't isn't just like a, oh, we're gonna throw whoever's parts, you know, give us something. We're gonna throw it on this bike and pump them. Like a lot of these parts we're just buying and it's stuff that we genuinely spend our money on to want to make a sick bike. So Oh. I was just thinking, dude, the room looks so sick. We got all this space and then doo -doo -doo. So you guys know that we have been under the wire. So we've been grabbing some parts from, like I said, other uh, vendors, a radio mount brake hanger that will work with the swing arm we ordered. We ordered an aluminum track dynamic swing arm, which is claimed to save 10 pounds. Carbon front fender, we're going with the Olin's front end custom, so we need to get a fender that made up to it, which will still take some work. So we got two options here. Put in the comments right now, which one you would go with. I guess if you're watching this, would you do this one that has the cutout under the fender, the one that I'm holding, or you could put the one Lance is holding, and get this out of here, watch. The one Lance is holding, or the one Juan is holding. Show them the one, show them. Barnett, heavy duty clutch, basket, and everything, plates. We'll figure it out, but Scorpion Clutch. What do you got, dude? Brambezi Master, I mean, Caliper. Look at that lineup. Oh my God. Yeah, like you said earlier, like dream bike build. This is what I would put on it. We have uh, Elite Moto Tech Clutch. I think we need to run the shortier lever though. Do they sell or make a shorty lever? Yeah, they do. So as you guys can see, it's obviously the shape of a bag. And you guys have seen this inner bag. Quite a bit of comments that we've seen of people like, oh, you need to lower the bag. It's not the height of the fender. We saw some stuff like that. I saw some, but yeah. so you guys know, I always had adjustments so you can see right in there, there's another set of holes. Um, so we can adjust the bag height. We're just playing with it. Again, this is just a sample piece. You can see there's like different holes drilled in it. Not everything is 100% accurate on that. We went ahead and talked about even shaving weight more, putting holes in different areas. Yeah, so we're gonna dimple die here. So for the the height thing, we could suck it in more, but the biggest thing is the swing arm that a lot of people don't keep in mind. Like the swing arm articulates up and down. So does the chain and everything here. So that's the biggest thing, right? That's what we need the clearance yeah. for. So if we suck this in too much, then yeah. we'll hit that with the shape of this it, bag. Yeah, or the more you lower it, the wider it has to go. So you're kind of playing with where the bag can sit on the bike in reference to the swing arm. So we got left and right though. Yes, we do. We haven't played with, we have, I don't know which one's which, but we have a left and a right, which we haven't played with yet. You guys have only seen it where one side was skinny. We're gonna be able to test fit and a right option. I got a call from Olin's. We went direct for the front end because it is custom fitment. It's specced to our weight. We were able to get Olin's to help us and sell us basically the same forks that they put on the factory Harley bikes. The lowers on the forks are longer, which then helps basically the ride height of a Harley. Um, a lot of the standard like FGR, like race style front ends, it's pretty short. It's They're originally made for sport bikes. On the factory Harley, it's a lot longer. So we needed to compensate for that height. So we originally were gonna do a really long drop tree, um, but because they reached out to us and told us like, hey, they have the longer one, that's gonna help us out. We're still gonna do a drop tree, but it doesn't need to go as low. We're gonna be able to like play with the height a little bit more. They were like, hey, when do you need these forks by? And I was like, I need them yesterday. Well, how do you want us to ship them? We're in, I think they said North Carolina. I was like, well, tomorrow? 
And they're like, all right, we'll overnight your forks right now. So Olin's overnighting the forks from across the country. So we should have those tomorrow. So Juan and I did get this text. Machinist working on the top tree that Juan engineered and designed. So we have this photo of it. The top tree's done. He hasn't machined the bottom tree yet. And he was a little reluctant to machine it. The forks were there. He kind of wants to like test fit. It's tough. I think we need the, we could definitely put it together and throw the stem on it and try to, it needs to be the whole thing, yeah. you know? And I mean, hopefully by this vlog, hopefully before we close this vlog out, we're gonna have the forks here and maybe some trees and actually be able to keep on moving. But we have to get this done, which you've yeah. done a good job so far. I mounted the speedo too, you see that? It's hard mounted. Nice. So you used our carbon bucket and then our gauge reload mount and you put it right to the stock Harley mount. Damn we'll it. delete the gauge. You know, everything that's like race inspired has a big old tack in the middle. So right. I felt like we got to go looks that so way. Sick. It looks so race. And then now that you're looking in, you see the carbon, even like the unfinished carbon, like kind of like hanging off that it just kind of like, to me, it like really finishes the build. I, I like it. Yeah, it's you sick. Know? It's coming along pretty nicely. I can if you'd it? like me to. I mean, I think it would be cool. So yeah, we're getting all psyched out on the carbon, but these mids you came up with, holy mother of God, dude. They're perfect. I know, we didn't want to go too far back or up too high, so. We're splitting the difference between like. Some gnarly. Like FXR size feeling bike versus like, we don't want to be like, sp like sport bike, like back here. <laughs> Look at this guy's face. Look at this guy's face. Dude, <laughs> I want to get the tank on here. Yeah, that way. Is that tank, is that tank it's still? It's fully in. I'll call right now over to Mulholland and see the status of the other tank. Yeah. Here's the other thing is that we're going with a 17 front wheel because we want sport bike tires on it so it can have better turning. So that was the other reason why we needed the front end to come down low, right? Because we were losing an inch. Well, it's two, but one inch. And right you away. can't lose anything. I, I can't afford to lose another <laughs> inch, brother. <laughs> Oh my gosh, this is like three or four pounds. What are those? All Don't, right. you can't judge because the wheel size is the wrong size and the forks, what they're not gonna that? match up. But I already see one thing we have to clearance. The, this thickness isn't changing. The width of uh, it, and it's already All right, well, let's see what's doing. It's the same. Thing. That's the fender, right that's the fender. That other one looks black. Chill, bro, it doesn't look bad. It no. just got, it has the Elvis Presley. <laughs> that's, little... that's like whack, dude. This thing looks clean. Guys, again, this is the one I was holding. That's the one Juan was holding. We asked you guys to vote earlier on in this vlog. It looks pretty damn good all carbon. I know, that's what like, I was saying. Like, are you like, we're gonna paint it? Like, like I a smile, not a middle finger. I like bright, poppy things. I feel like we're making something that's gonna be at Born Free, possibly the 120th Harley anniversary event. I feel like if the bike's just like black from a distance and like just carbon fiber, like, but from 20 feet away, it just looks like another black bike. I just feel like this looks sick. Like you look at that with the carbon, like I get it. Like I'm sure there's probably gonna be other carbon bikes out there. Like, okay, or we go full blown Lance style. You get one side, I get the other. <laughs> half carbon, half half. carbon. <laughs> <laughs> the other side gets my paint job, one side gets your paint job. Go with that original idea that my pops and I taped on here and like kind of follow the lines of this fairing as like a, as like a stripe through the bike. It stripes through the tank. It kind of like comes through and is like over the bag a little on the fender. You know, this whole top around the bike is carbon, the whole bottom around, the bottom of the whole bottom fender is carbon. We can leave a majority of the fender carbon. A lot of the Formula One cars like the like green and carbon Mercedes, like they leave a lot of it, but they gotta put some sort of element of pop to show depth and then their sponsorships. When it comes to the colorful creativity, I am not the guy. I definitely, like I think the dyno looks sick, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't have had like the courage to try to get that and risk me not liking it. I think we could do a happy mixture that shows the elements and the materials we, we use. Follow the body shape and like, and, and really highlight it. So I think that we have a couple cool renderings from Jim and we have a couple, that idea that I painted on there. I shared that with Chris Woods over at Airtrix. I think he's gonna render something up. And even if we don't have the choice of paint, we have to have them there so we can prep them and get them ready to paint because we got four weeks left. So he's gonna be doing a, a, a rush job for us on this. So we gotta, that's the other thing too. We can't go too intricate where he's like, dude, I got four weeks. I can't lay that many colors down. So it's Thursday, we just wandered in. We're actually here spying on Thrash's build. What are you doing, dude? 
I'm spying on all this great stuff they're doing on this ST, man. <laughs> so I have this offset. I know the center line of the pads, and then I know the offset of the FGR, and I know that the caliper or the rotor spacing isn't going to change. So these two are going to stay in the same spot, and then I got the center line where they mount to that. So that it all kind of determined that. I have the drawings too. If you want to look at, it. I have like mm. hands, so like two D drawings. I mean, the main thing for me is like where I'm at is I've got the upper first op and second op set up. I've got the lower first op set up. I want to run the lower second op where I have the upper second op. Mm -hmm. So in order for me to to try to run the lower, I got to take out the upper. So I was hoping to prove the spacing, make three more so we have spares and then pull that out and do the lower. Unless we get this, the theoretical spacers made, which I can, I just, it's just a late piece. Mm -hmm. Maybe you first look at his drawing um, with the four tubes with the wheel. We can talk about that at the computer. Go grab the trees. Let's kind of see what status they're at. Put our minds together on that again. Our friends at Olin's, they overnighted us a set of custom made FGR 250s. These are made to the Harley Davidson factory team's race spec. We need to make it work on a lowrider ST. FGR 250s. So let's crack this open. Our top tree is going to be rad. We wanted to make something that was to what we needed. Oh, All we right. have to assemble these? I don't know. They Some do. assembly required. Different shims. Oh, 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 oh. Bro. Losing shims. I didn't realize the bag was ripped Jesus. open on the bottom. All right. These, it comes with set up with your current weight and then this is after you eat tacos. <laughs> Damn. Look at this. Wow. Dude, look how Is light it? they are. <laughs> Insane. Let's go weigh comparison. Oh my. Oh my lord, bro. Dude. The bags have been fitted. He warned me because I've opened the bags too many times and dropped them before. And we don't want to drop the carbon pieces. All right, guys. Here it is. As you know, we put the two locations for the risers on our bagger top tree. And so we felt that it was only fitting to do it on the uh, soft tail low rider top tree. We are working to have this top tree. It is a drop tree. We're working to have this available for purchase for you guys. This set is custom made for these Olins. Yeah, the ones we sell will work with the stock. Race use only. Sheesh. You know, lay them out like on the bench. Okay. And then we can put both forks on and we can see the I stands. Th I think what we could do that would help us lean it on the bench. Yeah. We put both in here and then we could bolt the calipers and then we could try to measure the distance between center of the caliper, center of the caliper, and it needs to match the that. spacing of yeah. that. Dude. Hey, A1. Oh, What's that? It's upside down. I know, I'm just getting a bit. <laughs> it's not on the bike either, I know that. You guys could see the grin on my face right now. Oh, you scratched it. No. Probably be like just that bevel kind of coming up like. Hey, what? Dude, the axle doesn't work. No, oh, we need to turn this down. <laughs> turn down for what? Yeah, because it's just a universal yeah. size, so. I think we could, anything. normally most people just make a custom axle. I think we could make this one work by turning this down and then making like a nut that's on this side where it threads into it, but it's just the diameter. Of, yeah, of you that. sink it in there. Yeah. Center center should be like it six and a half. It says six and a half. But I still, I think like, you know, looking up there, like right now, let's measure. Your calipers up. Oh. oh yeah, let me get the caliper. <laughs> it's a little bit less. Yeah, it is a little bit less. I think that we have to have a lower, a lower tree. You could get away with, if you didn't put the pinch bolts in, we could probably get away with holding it together with the lower tree and then putting a wheel in there mm -hmm. and putting some spacers he makes up real quick and then we'll know. But unfortunately, even it, because of the length of these, if they're three feet long, if they're off by Sorry, a couple hundred thou. Six and a quarter is a center center. I was measuring overall width. Over. Yeah, so six and a quarter is it's it's center like center. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we could still it's double gone. check. I'll run you through all my measurements and I would like to just have a second set of eyes. <laughs> Jesus. I mean, there's def they're both heavy. Yeah. But this one's definitely heavier, but I would say 20% heavier. I mean, okay, guess. How many pounds lighter? Just give me that. This is 15 to 20 pounds. This is 10 to 15. I think it's probably five pounds different. I'm gonna try it. Oh man, I think for sure it's five pounds different. Yeah, so I, I, I really do. That's I mean, I gave a wide range, 10 to 15, 15 to 20 is my. Yeah. What? 
Hey. Wow. 14. How's the accuracy? 14.5. I said 15 to 20. All right, That's you're pretty close. Right. Okay, so now I said 10 to 15. Nine and a half. That's so it is five exactly pounds. Five pounds. So our guesstimate, like separate, was pretty accurate. So we're gonna save a total of 10 pounds in just the forks. I emailed BST yesterday, the photo of the bike, like all the carbon on the bike, because I just thought they'd be stoked on that. BST responded, thank you for sharing your progress of the current build. It looks really great. We are on track. Your rear wheel has been boxed already, and the front wheel was with our polishing team late yesterday afternoon. I will have another update you on the front wheel a bit later today. That was yesterday. That was yesterday. Well, they, because they're yeah. in South Africa, so I got it in the middle of the night. We're gaining height if it was, even if it was in the drop tree. Because this, you can only clamp up to there. Yeah, yeah. And you can see it's about an inch, which is perfect because again, we were stressing because we're going at 17 front. So we're yeah. losing one inch radially. Yep. I know it's two inches smaller, but radially. So that's good. So we're gonna be roughly at stock height. Yep. Plus our drop tree is gonna allow us to lift it. Set it where we really yeah, want it. Yeah, where we really want it. And yep. we'll be able to do the front That and the back. with the suspension in the rear. 10 pounds here. Supposedly 10 pounds on the swing arm, but 20 pounds. And then supposedly 10 on the battery. 10 on the battery. We have a lithium battery. You guys saw that. So there's 30 pounds. What do we save on the exhaust? We saved like 14. 14, so that's 45. We were with the carbon stuff like 15 to 20. Okay, so let's just say another 15 to be short, 60 pounds. 60. Okay, that doesn't include the wheels. That doesn't include the, the smaller tank that'll hold less gas. The shock was lighter. Just ballpark hip shot we're like 80 pounds right now Which, and that's not including the wheels because so we have no idea what those wheels weigh we never we were asked at 708 okay. let's just say we're at 80. okay 628 what did the dx win? bike started at 708 yeah that's what i said okay and then the dx is 621. so if you did without the wheel difference we we're at 628. so, we're so like, we might beat it yeah that's our goal remember that our original idea was, can we get this Lowrider ST with the fairing and the, and bags. the bags, bags being usable, lighter, than the, lighter than the DX. And obviously it's gonna have way more horsepower. Yeah, and handle way there. Yeah. So we have a drawing of the wheel, we have a drawing of the brakes, and we have a drawing of the front the forks. end, outside to outside. It was six oh, and six seven, and seven Yeah, okay. outside That's to cool. outside. That's a- uh, Almost six and a half. Yeah, because how thick is the rotor? Quarter inch? That spacing is, of the rotors outside, I think we're pretty accurate. And that is what this drilling is calling out. Yeah, but I, at least we know we see it there. And yeah. then, so then when we look at the wheel. If they're parallel, the only time they intersect is. Yeah, it's just they're, if yeah. they're touching. Yeah, so that's perfect. So they're mm -hmm. off these two, the pads. Oh, right. So, nice. so now that will truly set yeah, the, the space. correct way. Show us the whole forks on that. So what do you think, Rob? You confident to mill the next pieces? I think we're ready to go. I think we're ready. All right, gentlemen. Rob, thank you Thanks, for dude. Yeah, thank you, Rob. Bye. You got it. For thank sure. you. Dude, it's pretty light. Compared to the stock one, yeah. it's... And it, ha I mean, it has almost all the hardware it needs. So. This feels like, I would say, about only 40% of the weight yeah. of a stock one. Five minutes till five. Two Lane Life wants us over. Like this yeah. is what I wanted to show you. It was his idea and he bought all this stuff, but we redid it like this. I think it's pretty clean because he originally had the big reservoir like up here yeah. and it looked kind of dorky, but he got the smaller reservoir and then he got the mount off the fridge. It's pretty clean, dude. Yeah, super clean. And look, the shorty lever. Yeah, we need that lever. I, I won't even... So if it doesn't get here, we'll just take it off his bike. Yeah. No, we have one right here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Just take it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's clean. That, I want to do did that. Did you so. order that lever? No, not yet. Are we we got to order late? that lever. Yeah, it's the lever. There's the boys' bikes right there. I have to get some lotion, bro. Let's go, bro. We got like two minutes. Can these guys handle Jesus, this? Jesus, look at the setup. Oh, I man. haven't seen this many cameras since I was Don't in Chatsworth. Lance is here, Juan's here, or vice versa, whatever you guys want. Does anyone want a beer? Uh, uh, yeah, I'll take a beer. Uh, it's no, an ice can, cream. You can touch it. <laughs> hey, man, we got a, a, lot of, a lot of fun that's going to be ahead of us, but drop or with our daughters, it's a great I'm drunk. I ordered us some tacos. <laughs> There's carnitas, there's carne asada, and there's al pastor. So you you should know that Juan Dog and I only eat tacos off the trampo. Yeah, we understand. We're like, man, it would be sick if we got a free Harley. 
Get a little mix of everything. What's up, dude? Oh, we got we, need, we, we got stuff. Pastor. Where's we got Pastor? Beef. Yeah, get get this oh, junk out of here, bro. Pastor's over there. <laughs> Taco time, baby. Oh, oh I do. Okay. Is this the? Uh, this you is just green. This isn't the guacamole. No? Cheers. Right down the middle, Cheers. right here. Oh. Cheers. Come on, run it back. There we go, oh. baby. Pretty good. I'm oh, hungry though. I'm hungry. Come I'm assuming this is a brick and mortar spot. So what do you rate it as? Six. I would rate this as like a lunch cafeteria taco. Whoa. <laughs> no, the flavor was good. With the bros, but I'll give it a four. A four? <laughs> I give it a five. Oh, careful of these lights, homie. All right, mm -hmm. homie, you make sure you make See us look good. Right, we're going to get tacos. Let's go. Is it Trump already? So, a mí me da dos tacos del pastor y una mulita, por favor. Okay, para aquí, para yo, amigo. Para aquí. Can I get uh, tres pastor tacos? Okay. What's up, homie? We get two pastor tacos, mulitas. Now, have you? No. Are you another? That's some real tacos. Yeah. What's this? Uh -huh. I'm already ready, bro. Oh, got dang. three. That's you? That's me, dude. Why is her wife? Yeah. How you guys feel about that? Bam, wow, bro. What What's up? Where's yours at? A couple onions. You're not. Oh! Homie stacked you up with a, quite a bit of pastor. Yeah, bro. Dang. Cheers, boys. Post work day. Tacos, we're trying a new spot right now. Ventura Boulevard, it's like Ventura and Shoop, Fallbrook. Yeah. Green salad's fire. It really makes up for that taco we had at the Tulane Life Studio. I think that what I like about this one, I don't know if you feel the same or you're noticing it, but my pastor is like perfectly crispy. Seasoned, It's you can tell it's moist still, but the char of it's crisp. Like they did a good crisp On part. the outside it's crisp. Yeah. Jesus, look at that. It's nice and soft. Yeah. Oh, what do you think? I'm gonna I'm gonna put this up there with plat tacos and Sherman Way tacos. Those have been in the other vlogs. I mean, they didn't have the potato like plat. Right. But I kind of think for enjoyment of tacos, I like the way that they crisped up the pastor. Yeah, I think they cook the meat to perfection. It's yeah. crispy on the outside, but tender and juicy on the inside, and the flavor was up there with all of them. Yep. So I think that kind of puts them on top. Yep, totally. First part, baby.
there you have it guys a lot of cool parts we just showed you this week forks showed up which is incredible we made progress on the trees one what's up dude you're yeah, putting the box away a lot of progress not just on that stuff but even on the bike yeah look at this bags are all buttoned up oh boy new mid controls dialing in the fairing i think we picked the fender we're going to use i'm pretty excited i'm happy with the progress we made i think starting the week i was still a little stressed out i'm happy where the bike's at right now i think the next two days are crucial like final fitting the carbon stuff and getting it over to paint um, yeah and choosing the paint so i think those yeah. are the big things now get the tins over to paint chris over at saddleman hit me up so he's ready to make a custom seat for this thing we got to make progress hopefully we'll see some trees we can test fit the forks more properly bst that the wheels are almost done Okay. They're at Polish. Track Dynamics, the swing arm is getting done. So a lot of progress is going to be made in a couple weeks, but we only have four weeks left until Born Free. And as you guys saw in this vlog, we're starting to move. The warehouse was emptied out. It's already full again. Yeah, what's up with that, bro? So we're going to be doing some more moving and working on this bike. But thank you guys for hanging out, checking this out, and uh, following along on the progress. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. See you later.